Hey everyone, Max here, welcome to my lab, and in this video I'll take a very close look at Bogner Ecstasy Mini. At the moment, which is February 2022, Ecstasy Mini is one of the three amps, uh, mini amps, that you can find at miniamp.com. The other two are Friedman Mini BE and Diesel VH Micro. All of these are mini versions of, as the website says, legendary boutique amps, and of course they are inspired by their bigger brothers. These are simple one-channel 30-watt solid-state amps. And additionally to what you see on the front, they also come with an effects loop. Compared to the other two amps, the Ecstasy Mini has some additional micro switches on the front. It is priced at $299 or $300 US dollars and can be purchased right here at miniamp.com. Here are more specs that we will check later on, and it does require an external 24 volt power supply. In the US, you'll find it at Sweetwater for the same price, $299.99 or $300 US dollars, although it looks like it used to be more expensive. Some of you may say that this is way too much compared to similar amps by other brands, and you'll probably be right, but my job here is to give you the facts, not argue about the price. In Europe, at Tomon it's the same number, but in euros, including VAT. As always, you'll find all the links in the description to this video, and every time you purchase anything through my links, you support my channel at no additional cost to you. So thank you if you're doing this. Judging by the size of the box it comes in, it actually is a mini amp. Made in China, US power cord included, uh, actually not, it's the European version for me, as you can see. And here's the external power supply, 24 volts, 2 amps, looks a lot like a laptop charger. I wish it was built into the amp, because it's huge. And it kind of kills the whole idea of the amp being a mini amp, but okay, we've seen that before. I kind of understand the reasons why it is like that, but again, when taking a mini amp with me on a trip, it would be nice not to carry a huge charger for it. This is a mini user's guide in multiple languages, which is more like a quick start, and the real manual is bigger and more detailed. Here's the amp, and there isn't anything else in the box. Let's take a closer look. So on the front we've got guitar input, gain, bass, middle, treble controls, presence, and master volume. A power switch, and as I've already mentioned before, four micro switches for variac, gain, mid frequencies, and pre-EQ. Later on we'll figure out what they do. There's nothing on the top or on the sides. Rubber feet on the bottom. And on the back, well, this is uh, some sort of a handle. We've got effects loop, send and return, speaker outputs, two of them, and a power supply input, 24 volts, two amps. So I'm curious about this. The weight of this thing is gonna be between 1.5 and 1.6 kilos, or three and a half pounds. But together with the power supply, it's gonna be four and a half pounds or two kilos. So the weight of this thing is pretty significant compared to the weight of the amp. Here are the dimensions, the width, the height, including rubber feet, and the depth. I'm thinking if there is anything I could compare it to. Mm. Yes, here's a Les Paul looking guitar, and this amp is smaller than its body. I wasn't planning doing this, but I've just realized that uh, I'm really curious whether the amplifier really needs those two amps of power this power supply provides. So I'll connect it to my capture, plug in the guitar, and uh, do some measurements. All right, everything is ready. Let's turn this on. Okay, 120 milliamps so far, the guitar is plugged, and uh, if I turn up the volume, this is gonna go up to... Yeah, one amp. Look, the Varic actually drops... Uh, the amperage. In more than a half. Interesting. So yeah, uh, full power, one and a half amps, which is, yeah, okay, good. Which means the power supply has some headroom, and with Varric on, it's only, well, 
500 milliamps at full power, but you're not gonna be running it this loud ever. It is a more or less workable volume, and uh, that only takes 150 or to 200 milliamps. With Varag disabled, okay, 400 ish milliamps. So, yeah, nowhere near 2 amps, but again, if you turn this thing all the way up, yeah, it will take 1.5, 1.6. So, it's good to have some headroom. One thing I like about this power supply is the LED, the green light that goes on when uh, the cord is plugged into the power outlet, like so. Yeah, so you can tell that it's actually working. Some laptop chargers don't have a light, and uh, it's really annoying because you never know if it works or not. Uh, here you can be sure. Okay, this is my favorite part that is called Let's Void the Warranty part, and I must ask you not to try this at home for your own safety unless you really know what you're doing. Okay, let's go. Yes, it is half empty and uh, there is more than enough space for power supply. Hold on. For two or more power supplies to be exact. So why not just, you know, put it in. Why is this thing outside of the amp? Done. Takes less space like that. Shielding on the bottom. And this looks like a guitar pedal, just slightly bigger. For some reason it says Synergy. I don't know if it has anything to do with the Synergy modules by Bogner, but uh, who knows. I was expecting these to be based completely on SMDs, but it's not. I'm uh, surprised in a good way. Interesting, it looks like there's space for uh, something that was never implemented, maybe a switch of some sort, which was supposed to be here. I have a feeling that might have been a headphones output or something like that. This is it, now we know what's inside, and as I've mentioned before, don't try this at home. Alright, let's check what it sounds like. I'll be using this 1x12 closed back cabinet by Urasov with a vintage 30 speaker inside, which is one of the best 1x12 cabinets out there. I'll put two mics in front of it, the Lute LCT441 Flex and the SM57, and I'll also be recording the dry output from my Capture X just to have more options. So here we go. After checking the recordings, I've decided to go with a single mic, because it sounded great. So everything you hear from now on is uh, this LCT441 Flex by Lewitt, with a little bit of a low-pass filter. Let's see how much gain we can get out of it with the help of this switch. The pre-EQ switch boosts the high end when you go from the neutral to B1 position, and both mids and highs when it is switched to B2.
the mid frequency switch selects the frequency range controlled by the middle knob and according to the manual it can be set to 800 Hz, 1.6 kHz or 3.2 kHz. So you can either boost or cut out a certain part of the whole frequency range. Varex, which is supposed to emulate voltage drop, and as we have already seen earlier in this video, it actually drops the voltage, and that gives some additional compression and slightly changes the feel. Let's try it with a baritone and some lower notes. Speaking of the effects loop, other than the standard use, you know, the reverb pedal or something like that, you could also use this amp as a power amp for your external preamps. Uh, they should be then connected into the return input, and the cabinet goes here as usual. Other than that, if you want to use this amp for silent recordings, let's say use its preamp and go into your impulse response based cabinet simulator, then you can use this output here. And uh, you don't need to connect any cabinet in here, so you can go absolutely silent with it, if you need to. So, that was everything I wanted to tell you about Bogner Ecstasy Mini. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm looking forward to see you in one of my future videos someday soon. Thanks for watching, goodbye everybody.